There's a new feature in Photoshop CS5 called Repose. It allows you to extrude and extract objects. We're going to play with that, but we're going to start in Illustrator CS5. I love the precision that you can get in drawing with Illustrator. So let's go have a look. So in Illustrator, I have these three layers, just simple objects sitting here. And I need to get them into separate Photoshop layers. You can copy them, paste them, but instead I'm just going to export them directly from Illustrator and you can export out as a Photoshop file. And I'll show you the dialog box. When it comes up, you have a choice of RGB, CMYK, grayscale. We'll leave it at RGB, at high resolution. Most importantly, we want to write layers because we're going to use these layers and extract and extrude them. So I've already imported this into Photoshop. So I'll show you the layers that I have. Same thing as before. I've already taken two of these layers and extruded them out using Repose. I'll select this top layer, and when you go to the 3D menu and you try to choose Repose, it's teasing you. It's grayed out. It needs something. We need a selection. So I'll hold the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, click on here. Now I have a selection. Now I can use Repose. And notice that I can also use a text layer, a layer mask, or a selected path. So I use this current selection. The Repose dialog box comes up, and we have several choices in here, lots of different presets, and of course you can save and load your own. I'm going to use this particular one right here, but the one thing that you should get used to inside Repose is that very small numbers mean big things. A depth of three is way too much for this. It's going to pull it off into the distance. I actually want 0 .05 and a height of 5 and a width also of 5. And that's going to pull this off into the direction I want. The last thing I want to do is create a different texture inside here. We give you quite a few textures, but I'm going to load the default for Ray Tracer, load that in, and there's a nice metal gold that I'll use. Okay. Click OK, and now we've got our three extruded layers. The next part is important, and it's made a lot better. In CS4, this was very difficult. CS5, it's a piece of cake. What's important to note here is that we have three separate 3D layers, and we have three separate camera views. So if you try to move a camera, it will only move on each layer. So we want them to move together. To do that, I'm going to select two of these go into the 3D menu and merge these 3D layers together. So now they're in the same world. So one camera will control their movements. I'll do the same to the last one. Select 3D, merge 3D layers. They're all together as one. And if I grab my camera now and start to move it around, so you'll see that we've got all of these three together. The problem is you can see they're all stacked together the wrong way. So let me go back and, and change the view of the camera. So when you grab your camera tool over here, we've got lots of views and I'm going to choose top and that way I get to see them on top. So now we need to look at the top camera to select each one of these meshes to line them up. And as you can see here in the 3D panel, we've got lots of choices here. We need to go to the 3D mesh and move these around. This is probably the first one that you're going to grab, but that's the wrong one. This moves everything. We want to actually move the individual meshes. So we want to take this particular mesh and pan it. So if we click on the back and we can move this around, and if we zoom in here, we can get a little bit of a closer look. So I want this to be positioned in the back. I want the middle to be moved closer to that back. And then we want the front to be moved out away from that. We don't want them intersecting at all. And you know what? We could be a bit more accurate with this as we zoom in. I want to make sure we've got no gaps in there whatsoever. And now we've got them all lined up. Great. Now if we go back to our regular camera view, and we can go right to the front view. And now we've got our objects together. So remember, we started with an Illustrator file. We extruded them in Repose, and we've combined them together. 
we can now start to, to do things with this model. We can uh, take paint brushes, by the way, and start painting on here. And we can paint on different modes. We can paint diffuse, so that's the texture mode, glossiness, opacity. I'm going to show you what painting on the bump layer does. And the very first time you do this, you'll get a dialog box saying it does not have a bump map layer. And Photoshop will actually add one for you. And I'm going to create one that is divisible by two. So for whatever reason, uh, choose something that is divisible by two. Here, 1024 by 1024 pixels is a good um, value. And what happens when we create this is it makes this layer. And if we go and look at our layers, we can see that over here on the right, there's our bump map. So when a bump map is just completely white, there's nothing happening on there. Um, if you double click on this, it opens up a second document. This is a great place to talk about our little window here where I can pop this up and I can look in two places at once. So let me move my panel over here and we can see that in this particular view, we've got our um, shield and we've got the bump map. And anything you paint over here when you save, so if I just grab my uh, default colors and I start painting in black, when I hit save, you'll see it change here. If I invert this and save, then you'll see that that will extrude. So uh, one cool thing that I like to do to make metal look more like metal is to take a bump map and render some clouds. And you just make sure that you've got a default black and white. Save that and watch what happens inside there. You can see that we get um, a little bit of a, a cool kind of look inside here. Let me just grab my camera and we'll move that around. And we'll just move our widget around here. And we can also go to this view. And this one's really important. When you've got your camera view, this particular button, if you don't change this to a perspective camera view, then it looks like a regular uh, orthographic view, which is, uh, if you ever remember doing that fake cube, right? You remember doing that in, in grade school, you draw four shapes and you connect the lines. It doesn't have perspective. We want dynamic perspective. So when we click inside here, we get dynamic perspective, maybe a little bit too dynamic. So we need to take the camera and dolly it back, move it around. And you can see we've got some pretty simple controls for moving this around. And you can start to see what's happening with that ripple effect on our shield. And that is because, remember, we were adding a little bit of that uh, the cool clouds up there. And the last thing I want to show you is that I'm going to jump all the way back to Illustrator. And we've got some really cool symbol libraries in here, the Regal Vector Pack. And watch this. We've got this great looking shape, this great vector shape. I'll copy this, come back to Photoshop. And when I'm in this bump map layer, I can paste this in. And I get choices to paste this as a smart object, pixels, path, or a shape layer. And a shape layer is what I'm going to use because it will be very important. I'll show you. Let me just scale this up. And I'll fill it with white. And watch what happens when I save. It shows up inside here. And I'll move this over, save inside here. But what I really want to show you is that when it, it's a path like this, the path has a hard edge. And we get the resulting hard edge inside here. And typically, what someone would do when they're creating some kind of bump map extrusion is they would probably blur it. But the problem with blurring it is, how do you unblur it? So then you save a third layer and a fourth layer. Well, because I made this into a shape layer, I've got a pretty powerful uh, feature where I can feather this and unfeather it. So watch this. I'll just feather this a little bit, save it, and watch the difference. See how this looks more metallic, more like it's been pounded out of the metal and extruded. This gives you a great idea of how you can work easily between Illustrator CS5 and Photoshop CS5. Use what's great within each program to create amazing looking three-dimensional photorealistic artwork like this. Thanks.